Hi, I'm Bob Mangiello, and today I'm going to show you how to build the Silver Eagle 2. It's a great uh, printer, and what I do is I sell the hardware kit so you can print um, uh, t-shirts at home for a really reasonable price professionally. And um, what I want to talk to you about is this kit comes with the ability to print two colors but later on, whenever you want, you can buy more brackets um, to um, to print more than more than two colors. You can print four or six colors, as many as you want, and you can actually print them uh, relatively fast. Uh, with this printer, I can print pretty much as fast as if I had a rotary printer, and and that's the truth. I can print six. 60 white color or two colors t-shirts every minute um, the only thing that slows me down is the amount of time the flash dryer takes to um, to dry them so I'm going to bring the camera up here and I want you to see um, a little better how this all looks and uh, and then I'll go I'll show you how how you're going to put one together all right you can see um, it's a really really cool stand and uh, these are the registration brackets they help you register the color and see how how well you can move uh, the screen around to register a color you tighten it and now this screen is set for that color and you're going to do that for every color I show you in this video how to make your own platen. It's a really cool idea I came up with. And, um, and you can actually take that platen off. Uh, and, and, and when you see how I make this platen, you can make sleeve ones, all that, for just maybe $10, $15. And this is aluminum on here. So it's going to handle uh, the chemicals and everything like that. The rest of it is wood. You can see, and all the metal parts and uh, the aluminum comes in the kit. So um, the only thing you have to do is buy the screens, aluminum or wood, and uh, and you can be printing T-shirts. So now um, let me um, take you into uh, how to make this thing. It's really easy. Thanks. Hi, I'm Bob Mangello from SilkscreenNow.com and um, today I'm going to show you how to build um, a really cool printer. I call it the Silver Eagle 2 and um, first I'm going to show you what you have to buy at the, the Home Depot or hardware store and from Harbor Freight and then I'm going to show you the things I provide to help complete what I call the Silver Eagle Tool, um, Silver Eagle 2 um, uh, textile printer. And with this printer you can do um, one color, two color, as many colors as you want. And I'll explain that later um, in the video. Basically, um, let's, let's start with um, the materials you're going to need. You're going to need some uh, wood glue, so buy some of that. You're going to need a tube of liquid nails, and I bought the heavy duty stuff. You'll see what I use that for. And then I have 10 uh, deck screws three inches long. So that's what the materials you're going to buy at the Home Depot. And now the, the wood that you need to buy is the first piece is a piece of red oak and it's three quarter inch thick it's three and a half inches here says it right here three and a half inches um, wide and the whole piece is four foot long when you buy it it's around ten dollars but it is red oak it's real hard and it's not going to warp and I'll explain why that's important later and the, the piece I cut off of the four foot piece is four inches long so in the end you want uh, when you get this red oak you're going to cut uh, a piece 44 inches long and one four inches long 
and um, so you need that and the next material you're going to use is called MDF MDF and um, the reason I use this um, is it is very dense really thick really heavy um, and again it won't warp uh, easily um, but you must paint it in the end you must cover it and paint it because water will will eventually deteriorate it so you want to after you're all done with this project paint it so um, MDF comes in a four by eight sheet at Home Depot and I, I forget how much it is not that much uh, it also comes in smaller sheets like two by two feet by four feet I bought a piece for ten dollars and I think that might be what you need to do this project I'll, I'll explain it a little bit but anyway you're going to cut um, uh, one piece at 24 inches by three and a half inches and it's three quarter inch thick so we want one at 24 inches long one at 26 by three and a half inches long one at 28 inches three eight three and a half inches wide one at 30 inches by three and a half inches um, long and then we want a piece that is 16 by 16 and again it's three quarter inches and I got all this easily out of a two foot by four foot piece of MD, MDF material okay now the two other pieces you need and you can use MDF I just found this scrap around the house that I had and this is for the stand so it doesn't have to be MDF it could be plywood or whatever you have and you need a 20 by 12 inch piece and the piece I had had it was like from a countertop so I had for my on it which is pretty cool um, you'll see why I use it and you can decide what you want to use the other piece for the stand is 25 by 18 25 inches by 18 uh, inches and again this is three quarter inch and it's a scrap piece I had it from a countertop so it's for my so if you have this stuff laying around the others must be MDF the other material I told you about all right the next thing you're going to need to buy is a stand from a place called Harbor Freight okay Harbor Freight is in most cities um, I imagine you can order this online but what it is is a 29 inch heavy duty um, tool stand and uh, the number the item number is 95128 and on my YouTube video right below the the video there'll be a list of the material list that I just went over okay so let me show you the stand you're gonna assemble this stand hope you can see it pretty cool stand and it's twenty eight dollars now I left one side open all right and let me show you what we're going to do with that oh and the other thing is I drilled holes along here in all these because we want to make this stand sturdy and so that's what this is for Let's see how I did this. There we go. Oh, 
Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and attach this. So basically, put your stand together, put your large piece of plywood or whatever here, and we're going to drill, and those holes we drill, we're going to put little wood screws to secure this. And then, not sure you can see this, this other piece of plywood or whatever, we're going to screw to the top of this stand so it's real sturdy. And I'll sh give you a better point of view with the camera here in a little bit. But basically those are the materials you're going to buy, assemble, and then I'm going to show you how to put the rest of this printer together. All right? Okay, you can see this. I turned the stand on its side here. And I drilled holes in the metal bars of the stand. They're not in there. You're going to have to pre-drill, like right here, holes. And then I put these three-quarter inch um, flathead screws to uh, secure it. All the way around. So that's going to make your stand really, really sturdy, uh, really, really sturdy. Um, so anyway, so you want to do that. And like I said, this doesn't have to be MDF. It could be particle board or whatever you have laying around the house if you have it. But it doesn't have to be expensive. All right. So the next thing, we're going to turn it upside down like that and we want to take our other board the 20 by 12 and attach that evenly it's a little bigger than the top but you want to make it even You can measure if you want. I'm not measuring. I just kind of eyeballed it. But basically, we want to do the same thing. We want to attach that. All the way around. Using the same flathead screws um, to attach that. And I will provide these in the kit. These screws I'm providing in the kit. So, there you go. I put eight here and eight here. And so now this stand is very very sturdy so let me give you a better look at it you see it has a top so that's the stand what it's going to look like when you're done with the stand and assembling it now we're going to build the printer part. All right, the um, next step is uh, we're going to put together the MDF strips. And um, first one you put down is the smallest. And then the next one, and you go larger and larger as you go. And um, Basically, if you can see that, the steps like that. So basically, you want to do that, and then you want to drill two pilot holes to put these deck screws in. So you want the drill bit to be smaller than this deck screw. So um, you see I drilled two pilot holes, and all I'm going to do now is glue, put glue on these. and stack one at a time.
add basically these pilot holes or these screws are to um, hold these together while they're being glued. I like to get the star bit. When you buy a box of deck screws, buy the star um, head and they'll give you a bit that'll uh, Alright, so we're going to let that, that glue dry, um, but basically um, that's what you want to do. You want it to look like this. This is the MDF. The red oak will go on top of that. We're going to glue that too. And, um, and we can either clamp it or, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple screws in this to so it, it dries well. Now you see on the red oak, I, I cut the corners off like that. Um, it'll be a good idea because the t-shirts, the neck of the t-shirt's gonna go over that. So um, we call that dog ear, that um, board. So that's what we did, just cut, cut a little off. You can round it, it could be nice. But your next step is to put the red oak on there. All right, um, so let's put glue on this. I'm gonna put the red oak on. And we need to draw a few pilot holes. This, this red oak is really um, hard, you're not gonna. You're not going to be able to just to put a put the screw right into that for sure. I'm going to go ahead and put a deck screw uh, up front here. to hold that down because that one inch didn't these little screws are not didn't grab very well and, and we want it to we really want it to hold together oh I ran out of batteries all right I'm going to take a break here and, and charge up the battery but basically I think uh, we're not going to use these little one inch things. Go ahead and run the, your deck screws through the oak one and two in the back. I'll finish that up later. All right, so um, to continue, I, I just used a, a deck screw up front here. And then I went ahead and used the three inch deck screw on top here to glue this the red oak. Now the next step we're gonna do is measure 17 inches from the back and draw a line and then our four inch piece of oak we're gonna glue that. right on that line. Now, I'm not going to screw that in because, um, you know, maybe to clamp it would be a good idea. Um, 
tell you what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and put this piece. This is part of the kit. And um, you want the holes. The one with the most holes. Downward. And you want to center that. You see in the oak, I, I drew a line right in the center. So that hole just centers up. And I put one inch in the back and one inch on the front. And let's just go ahead and... Put some pilot holes in there. All right, we want to make that as straight as possible. All right, in your kit, you have you will have like a two-inch lag bolt and a washer. Let me show you what that looks like. A lag bolt has a point and a hex head, and you're, it's a quarter inch, so we're using a quarter inch flat washer. That's what you're going to use. To hold that down. Now this is red oak. So it might be a little tough. Okay, so I have a bit to handle that. I think it's 716. Well, let's give it a shot. Very hard wood. We're dealing with, so what I'm going to do. Is make the pilot hole. A quarter inch. So in this block, I'm going to go ahead and So I made that a quarter inch hole so it wouldn't fight me. And do what it's doing. I hope that makes sense what I With a little work, I did it, but I had to, on that black of wood, make it quarter inch. Not all the way down, because you want the, that bolt to, uh, to pull and glue down to that. So basically, we have our L brace on there, and um, now there are two little holes. We want to make sure this is straight. So there's two little holes to help. Hold it steady.
that when you're using the littler bit on and we're going back to the little three quarter inch flathead uh, wood screws to kind of just hold that in place. Okay, so now that's on there really secure. Okay, now I want to tell you why I use red hardwood, red oak, and, and all this other stuff. In the past, when I've used 2x4s to build a printer, about two weeks later they twist and they warp. And so it's important that your platen and everything stays straight when you're printing. You can't have everything bending. So the reason I used all the wood that I explained, the MDF, you know, instead of a 4x4, four four, you know, you may say, oh, that'd be easier, but, you know, this wood is so moist that they sell. Like I said, in two weeks it, it bends. So you want to use the wood I'm prescribing if you want to have a really cool printer. And uh, it's really not that much more. All right, so we're all set there. Now I'm going to go on to the next step. All right, well, we're back to the stand. And we just made this piece here, right? So that's how it's going to look. Right? So we're going to glue and use the rest of the deck screws. There's four left out of the ten. And we're going to come up from the bottom and uh, we want this piece centered. We want this at the very end, like that. Okay, and so that's how it's going to look. When I'm done, I'm going to flip it over and, and uh, be drawn. But I wanted you to see what we were doing. And you see the printer is taking shape. All right. All right. Um, basically, I am going to glue and um, screw this tabletop down. Um, but... Basically, I drilled four pilot holes. I put three in the back here and one in the front because you're going to be putting pressure on that. So we want to hold the back really sturdy. And so let me remove this. Go ahead and put the glue. And hopefully, I can uh, find those pilot holes again. All right, you see I put little marks to center everything. Let me see if I can... Well, this is going to be interesting. There we go. Well, that wasn't too hard. Okay, found the pilot hall. I'm going to screw this down. Okay, now, you see I marked it so I can center it once I turned it over. Now, some of you probably already have a better way of doing it than what I'm doing. So you do it the best way you know how.
I did that because it was not uh, connected very well, so it wasn't holding tight enough. All right, so that is done. All right, so once you've glued that down and screwed it down really well, your stand's going to look like this. Right, and our next step is to show you how to make a make your own platen. It's really cool because you'll be able to make any size you want. Um, once I show you how to do that, it'll be the best platen you ever had. So anyway, here's your basic stand. All right, this uh, next video, I'm going to show you how to make a a platen for your uh, printer. And this applies to probably any printer. It's uh, what I thought of. I think is pretty pretty cool because what you're going to do is use. Uh, remember the MDF. Well, this is what all printers uh, have is MDF, and what they do is they put Formica on this, and that is really a good way to make a platen and. Generally, that's what you'll see on every printer. But what I thought of is uh, what is even better is a sheet of aluminum. So in the kit, I give you a 16 by 16 sheet of aluminum, and it's, it's got a plastic covering um, to protect it so it doesn't get scratched. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to make a platen and this will apply to any size if you want to make a sleeve platen or a larger platen uh, you just have to find some aluminum and that'll be at any steel and pipe place in your area uh, they'll be able to cut you a sheet of aluminum um, uh, sometimes they even have scrap sizes <coughs> so that's really good all right so what I did is I marked um, the center, three and a half inch center, because it's going to go on that three and a half inch piece of wood. And uh, this may change if you're, you're trying to make a platen for some other kind of printer. Uh, you're going to have to look at what I'm doing here and, and adapt to that. But basically, what I did is that's three and a half inches. That's the center line, and I marked three and a half inches. Then I marked four inches down from the top. And from the back, it's five and a half inches. Now, earlier I drilled it, and it was the wrong wrong place. So I want to tell you it's five and a half inches, and, uh, and I'll explain why here in a minute. So the next step is we mark it, and we drill pilot holes, and I'll show you what we're going to do next. All right, you see the top of the printer there? Okay, and so that's where we're going to put the platen. And I've already drilled, pre-drilled some holes, but I want to show you what I did. Basically, I measured two and a half inches from the edge there and marked the line and brought this up. Oh, we're going to flip this around. Okay, so that's four inches for those two holes. And we want five and a half inches. Earlier, I drilled these out, but what happened is it went into a thicker Thing and, and we just really needed to go through the oak. And uh, the screws we're going to use are these tapered machine screws, and they have to be long enough. So let me show you what I did here, just to get an idea. I first drilled a pilot hole, right? In, in the four holes, right? And then I went ahead, these screws are a quarter inch, so I use a quarter inch drill bit. And I drilled, first I drilled one hole all the way through, and I put one of those screws all the way through, and then I did another one, and I, uh, so now that's 
pretty stable. Now I can do another one. Right? Okay, the other thing I did is take a, a bigger bit. And made it so that is flush with the top. If it isn't, do it a little bit more because you do not want, you, this has to be smooth. So we're going to repeat that four times. Throw a pilot hole first. And then a quarter inch. Right? Then pay for it. And then put your machine screw in there. Okay, so ignore those. We don't want that. It's five and a half inches. This is four inches. And now, when you take these out, you have your four screws. And now we're going to go ahead put washers on there. I'm going to actually do that. Can you see that better? So we want to tighten those up, and then we want to put four more washers down here. Okay, ignore those two holes. Those were mistakes that I made. So don't do that. You're going to do these. All right, so now... Okay, that's a tight fit. Now, you can actually ream those other holes out a little more. And so, we're going to take four more washers and four more nuts and attach them on the other side of the yoke. And in a minute, I'll show you on the camera what I'm doing.
Okay, so that is really straight and even because of the hardwood and the oak. And uh, let me show you what it looks like on the bottom. You see I put washers and tighten that up and there is a little space between there where the nut is, but that's okay. Uh, so we have it real tight. And so let's do the next uh, step here. Okay, the next thing I did is I took a little sanding block, make sure that that's really flat. And so what we're going to do now is glue the piece of aluminum down. And I'm going to use liquid nails. And uh, we're going to put this on Okay, now this is what we want to make sure is that it is flat This aluminum by the way is 0.4 Thickness I think or 0.04 Take that paper off. Oop. Okay, now we have a something that can handle the heat from a flash dryer. It's very smooth. Be great for printing on. And like I said, you can make any size uh flat you want and uh, this aluminum and the wood should not be that expensive. I, I doubt that you'd have more than 20 or 25 dollars into it and, and that's a high price. Um, if you find a place that has scrap aluminum, you know, it just might be a few dollars to make. So anyway, so we're gluing it down. Now we have to let that um, dry. But what I'm going to do is take a grinder a little bit and round off those edges so when you're putting t-shirts on they don't snag or get caught on that but you see this little here thing here is for your neck and your t-shirt a lot of people you know I used to just have these and a lot of people would like that uh, it's not necessary but anyway it, it's there um, uh, so anyway we're going to let that dry and then I'm going to show you how to assemble the rest of the printer. Alright, <clears throat> a real quick point I want to make and that is um, these edges on the aluminum are very sharp. Okay, now you can take a sander and round that off more. I just knocked the, the sharp edge of the wood off but the corners of the aluminum and these edges are real sharp, so I had to take a file and file all the edges all the way around. Just take your hand because um, when I was adjusting that screen, that corner ripped the screen. So make sure you do that before you put a screen on there. You may want to put some uh, caulking, just some. Uh, you know, like bathroom caulking or whatever around the edge to help round that off. I think that would probably be a good idea. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that before you uh, went ahead and adjusted everything. All right, good luck. Putting the screen. Okay, the next step is you're going to take these pins that, um, there's two of them, 
and you're going to put them in these holes on the end of this bracket and just hand tighten them for now. You see there's a lot of threads and we're going to adjust the height by adjusting these nuts on the end and I'll show you why we need to adjust the height. There's a few steps here we have to take. So we're just doing this by hand right now. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is take our screen. Now all screens are not the same dimensions, so you want to... I have a mark here that measures the center of the line. Okay, let me adjust the camera. Okay, what I did is I marked a, a center line and basically just going to push that up against the pins in the center and mark two lines on your frame. Now this could be an aluminum frame or a wood frame. The wood frames tend to warp and after a while so if you can afford the aluminum ones but we're going to draw a hole right on those two lines next. And we're going to drill three eighths inch holes I used a 3 8 paddle bit, I think they call it, but it's for wood. And uh, just get rid of the sawdust. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is I have some carriage bolts that are two inches long and we're going to bring them okay see this is the inside of the frame we're going to bring the carriage bolt up and the next thing we're going to do is put one of these brackets and a washer Then enough. Now, you're going to tighten it up until the carriage bolt. So you want to, that carriage bolt to actually um, be flat with the wood. So we want to do that on both of those. Both holes. So, and tighten it down. Now, it's just hard the first time, but then from here on out, you won't, it won't be this hard. Alright, so they're both on there. Okay, we're going to bring the camera back around. Show you what I'm doing here. Okay, these brackets, these are called registration brackets. We're going to loosen them up. See how that this moves? That's going to help you register. Okay, we're going to bring these out to the edge. Okay. 
All right, so one Caesar is Reggie Brackett's so rod. Just lay it on the platen and bring it over and adjust these just so they clear. All right, just so they're at the very edge and they'll fit right over and no further. Okay, now, once these are tight, there's a piece of plastic in your kit. Cut out little pieces. You're gonna push these down. Just enough. to stop the bracket from falling. So once we put it on there, see it won't it won't fall down. Now I spent a little time on this, but I'm gonna tell you right now these are really tight fits. Okay? And if anything's at an angle, they're not gonna come off easily. So when you're adjusting it and all that. Now I spent a little time off camera adjusting it, but I'm gonna tell you one thing I I had to do is kind of lift this up. It's almost so so this would come on and off easily. Okay, so you, you want to be able to do this. The plastic stops the plate. If the plate falls down, it'll bind. And when you tighten it, you won't be able to lift this off. So you want that to come off easily, but that's your registration. So spend time on adjusting this so it does come off. And remember, I don't know, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna give you a pan view of what I'm talking about. What I do on all the new brackets is I, I kind of bend it up a little. And uh, so they come on and off easily because it's a very tight fit. You want good registration, but you see these brackets allow you to move the screen in many directions. And then you tighten it, and now that's your registration, right? And you're gonna lay your screen aside. And so you can print as many colors as you have, have brackets. Now with the initial kit, you're gonna get two sets of brackets. That means you can print two colors, but if you wanna order more brackets, uh, you go to my website, uh, silkscreennow.com and it's called registration brackets and I sell two at a time uh, extra so you can print as many colors as you want and um, basically that's it you're gonna do this now um, you know sometimes that you know, it, it, it's just a real tight fit. So you're gonna have to get used to that. But it's real easy to do. Okay, so in order to register a color, see how much wiggle room you have? You can register any color. It's a great printer. And uh, sometimes I, I do this to unconnect it. Right? Get that off. Put on your next color. So um, I will demonstrate how this works. I've done this in many videos, but this is a great starter printer to help you get started. So you see, it's a really great stand. Good looking printer. And um, the hardware kit for the Silver Eco 2 is really inexpensive. And I imagine the rest of the materials cost about $50. So um, you can have a multicolor printer. And uh, 
do professional uh, printing and make money at home. And it's real easy to do. All right, so visit silkscreennow.com for more information. And I appreciate it. All right, um, for those who bought the Silver Eagle One, um, there's a, a part that you have which I send you, and it won't be in the Silver Eagle Two, but it's the part that you put the platen on. And so, if you build, you take all your materials and and put together the stand I have, you will not need this. You will need, you'll have one of these, but you will need to drill a hole. See that black dot? You need to build, drill a 3 8 inch hole anywhere between these two holes, really. It could be in the center, it doesn't matter. So you're going to have to drill a hole where if you buy the Silver Eagle 2, I have punched a hole in that already, so you won't need to do that. The other thing is you have a platen already made. And um, if you don't want to um, do the aluminum one, find a piece of aluminum, um, and you want to use the old platen, what you're going to do is just from the bottom just put screws in to hold this platen. Um, uh, you won't have the option though to take it on and off. So you may want to go to that, but for right now, if you just want to go in there and just make sure the screws do not poke through because that'll uh, hurt the formica and, and your printing. So that's the difference uh, from the Silver Eagle 1 and 2. And so if you have the Silver Eagle 1 and you have any questions, uh, call me um, and, uh, and I'll help you through it. But basically the video I just did uh, shows how to make a really sturdy stand and a really um, which is really important for printing. You have that stability, and that's about it. So thanks a lot, and if you have any questions, go to silkscreennow.com, and my phone number is there, and uh, my email is there. You can email me, and if you have any other questions, but this kit is real reasonable, and this is a really great printer to start out with and, and keep uh, printing. It's going to print uh, just as fast as any the printers you uh, spin around. I can print um, <clears throat> 60 shirts an hour with this printer. That's one a minute. And I'm actually faster than the, uh, the poor man conveyor or faster than the flash dryer can dry them. And that even goes for a two color. I can print a 62 color print with that. Now the other option you have too, by the way, is you can buy extra brackets. They're on my website. And they're called registration brackets. And I give you enough for two two more colors. So the kit you can with come with is for two colors but again, you can buy extra brackets and make a four color or a six color or a ten color. But like always, I recommend the profit or the money you're going to make is in a one color t-shirt, maybe two color. Stick with that, you're going to make a lot of money. You start doing a four color, it means you have to have the artwork for four colors, you have to register four colors, you have the labor and taking the screens or even if you have a regular printer it's just uh, to me there's no money and it's just a, a big waste of time and um, the, the truth is you can print a thousand four color print in LA you can find an automatic press they will print a thousand of them four colors for 2500 bucks and that includes the t-shirt. So it is cheaper to have somebody else do a thousand t-shirts for $2,500, that's 250 a shirt, than to uh, do it manually, um, do a hundred manually. 
So anyway, uh, again, go to SilkScreenNow.com. My phone number, my email address is there. This kit is really reasonable and it's fun to build and you can print. It's a good solid machine.